Hello and welcome to another episode of Marriage in a Tightrope. I'm Alan. And I'm Katie. And we're still married. Katie, we had a date night last night. And did we even talk about mixed faith marriage or religion or anything? <sighs> Heavens no. We didn't! We heard a, a sort of type of religion in rock and roll. That is a good religion. We went and saw a, a musical at the Hale Center Theater here. For those that are in Utah, you may recognize that name. Called the Million Dollar Quartet, and this is an unaffiliated. They're not sponsoring the episode or anything, but you it was guys, so much fun. I am shocked they haven't gotten more like hype over this. It's it was incredible. It was the best thing I've seen at Hale ever, and I am a huge, wow. huge fan of Hale. We go to a lot of plays. I, I don't. We we joked. I don't know if something like Hale, other than like a metropolis city if it would work in any other town in America because people love plays here. Yeah, we talked about They love the performing arts. There's a lot of kids in performing arts in Utah and that's kind of been perpetuated throughout the generations. Well, and I think too there are so many people that are so talented. Yeah, and that's why. And that is why and last night it was the Million Dollar Quartet, if you don't know, is um, it's four guys: Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, and Carl Jerry Perkins, Lee Lewis. and Jerry Lee Lewis, and they performed all together at Sun Sun, Sun Records. Records. That's where they were all discovered. I almost say, said Sunstone. <laughs> if you're our age, you probably saw uh, "Walk the Line," and there is a him singing, Johnny Cash singing. Uh, Folsom Prison Blues at Sun Records in front of this guy named Sam Phillips. That's Sun Records. So that's where the recording studio was. Anyway, this literally has nothing to do with mixed faith marriage. And guess what? That's the point. The main reason why I wanted to start with this was not to plug Hale Center Theater, though, please go support local theater. Yes. Uh, Even if you're not in Utah, go to your local theater and support it. The other is you guys can... We, well, let's just talk we, because we're in the same situation still. We can all just take a break. Just say, can we have a non-religious date, please? Can we just take go a break? Take a break. We don't need to talk about it all the time. We can just take a step back and go enjoy each other's company and remind ourselves that we are in love without any need to talk about where we're at with the heart stuff. Right. And the last... I would say a couple weeks. Alan and I really tried to do that. Uh, Alan's stress level came to a head, and if you want to say it that way, and we decided, let's just turn it off. Let's go ahead and just focus on the family. So last weekend was conference weekend. We actually had a really nice weekend all together. We didn't plan anything. We didn't do anything. We just were as a family, and same with this weekend. You know, we got our date night, but we just, we're not planning anything. And so it's been nice to just focus on the family and take a break. Is that how you feel? Yeah, it's absolutely how I feel. I think the last thing that listeners of this podcast heard on the last episode was I was having a pretty difficult time. That was just a couple of days after the stress had boiled up that we recorded. And I was feeling it in my back and in in my head, everywhere. I was feeling it everywhere, but mostly my back. Uh, Just talking about it. I I haven't really, I mean, I have made a few changes, not on social media as much, just the input overload, as I I think I expressed on that podcast, was just getting to me. I kind of pushed away. I didn't watch the vice presidential debate, and I didn't watch some of these these things because it was just too much. I, I just felt totally overwhelmed. I'm feeling a lot better right now. No one's asking, but I'm telling you anyway. I'm feeling a lot better right now. I'm still six foot seven and slightly overweight, and so my back is going to hurt, <laughs> whether my mental health is good or bad. Your knee will stop hurting soon, hopefully, though. Yeah, we are getting. Uh, I'm having surgery again, and I've had a a really good experience with the doctor that performed my first surgery, and he's he's been so so kind. And he fit me into his schedule and he, he texts me to make sure I'm doing okay. And it's just been like, he's been like the doctor and the secretary, like his staff will call me and say, Hey, uh, the doctor wanted me to call you and just, uh, make an appointment so you can come in and get your MRI schedule. Like they're being totally proactive and it's all him. He's, he's incredible. So shout out to you. Maybe I should send this to him and so we can listen to it, but, uh, love you, buddy. So... You know, I think that this rolls into, we can talk a little bit about conference. You gave a little over overview of how it went for us. And, 
You know, honestly, I was a little worried going into the weekend, uh, not just because of conference, but we had a baby blessing in Katie's family. And I, the weekend before, I had, had all of this stress bubble up. I wasn't feeling myself. But just by the time the weekend hit, so just a week after my meltdown is a little dramatic, but after my, epi- it was. my episode, maybe? No, it was a meltdown. All right. A week after my meltdown, I was feeling much better. Even now, it's a week later after that, I'm feeling almost normal. I mean, I'm never really normal just because I'm like that. I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But In fact, I was totally checking on him and saw that he had liked someone's post on Facebook. And I said, Alan, you're supposed to be taking a break. Get off. It was over a week later. I mean, anyway, but you're, you're sweet. You're, you're taking care of me. I love you. But conference, you know, Saturday we had baseball all day. So that was kind of our are out, if you will, whether we liked it or not. I did get to listen to some of Saturday morning. I also got to listen to the wet women's session on Sunday. And then Sunday morning, we listened to most of that conference. And then we had the baby blessing in between. And then the afternoon was kind of like hit and miss because we were still with family from the baby blessing and everyone was talking and visiting. It was kind and of on in the background. It was kind of in we the background. Listening. Right. So I, I'm going to give you my two cents from my point of view. I recognize that everyone comes into a general conference with their own biases. And I have in the past, I've been mentally in different places and different stages. And so maybe one talk affects me, another talk doesn't. And that's just across the board, how you can, there are some that are more egregious than others. But for the most part, this, I came into this um, conference just thinking, I'm going to be open minded. I'm going to take it for what it is. And the good stuff that I like, I'm going to, I'm going to take with me and the rest, I'm just kind of kind of keep at arm's length and say, that doesn't work for me. And it's the first time I've been in that more of a healthy mindset rather than taking things so so personally and you know one friend reminded me that these men are general authorities which means they are going to be talking to the general assembly i don't fit the general group anymore i am different than the general group so of course their messages aren't going to fit me every time right it's it, they did before when you and I were both fully in, we were fully active, absolutely it fit me. But it just doesn't anymore. So also having that in mind made it a lot easier. And quite honestly, I don't feel like there was anything that was too inflammatory for me. And I actually, there were a number of talks that I really enjoyed. So overall, I'm giving it, you know, for me, I'm I'm saying like, yeah, okay, that was that was good. You know, the only <laughs> the only criticism that I, I have probably every single conference is that I wish there were more uh, representation of women because women make up more than half of the population. And yet we don't hear from half of the speakers as women. And I feel like women have a different way of approaching things. And I really loved some of the talks by the women this this conference. And I just wish that we had more, more people speaking out. So that would be my only thing. But otherwise, I'm going to say that it was fairly positive. And to be fair, too, I also had a group of friends that uh, we would text each other, and they're all in the same space as me. And they text me some pretty positive things too. So it was, it was, it was really nice. It was a nice change to not have a really bad weekend. I don't know if that's what I could say. Right. Yeah. I mean, and for me, it was, it was fine. I didn't, it just, it goes mostly, it just goes in one ear and out the other if I'm listening and doesn't stay and swirl itself in my head as often as it used to it back in the a few years ago it it was hanging on every single word and are they going to say anything about people in my position and yeah they are and they did and fine it i just the the more time that goes by and you've heard this before but if you're new to this and if things are really really hurtful uh as you're listening to conference that's completely normal and completely okay most of the time And it is my experience that over time, that pain goes away. 
And sometimes you just need to step away from conference. And if you start to get agitated, you just turn it off and that's fine. And you can tell your spouse that. Just say, I understand this is a good experience for you. It's really not for me. I'm going to go on a bike ride or I'm going to do this. And just remove yourself from the situation altogether. So for me, yeah, there were things that I heard. I mean, that I didn't that I didn't agree with, that I even thought were more than just disagree with. But again, it's just not as painful as it used to be. So, and then the baby blessing was actually really nice. Okay, this is what I've decided. I've decided that baby blessings at home are far better than at church. So why is that? We all went to my sister's house. It was just, everyone was there, ready to go. And... They did the blessing. They performed the ordinance. It was cute. We all got pictures with our our new niece. Well, she's not new. She's a year old, but um, she's adopted. And so that's why it's been a while before they've been able to do the blessing. And then after we had lunch and we got to just sit around and talk and enjoy one another. But Ellen, why do you feel like it was different for you this time around? Well, one, you're not in a church chapel, so that's, you don't, A, you don't sit through testimony testimony meeting meeting or all those talks. That's, that's just less, you're less of an outsider. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I don't feel like an outsider at your sister's house. And I understand that there are people that you can feel like an outsider in your own family's homes, but that's not how it is in your sister's house at all. So that's, that's a big part of it is you're not actually at the church. Uh, we did dress up. We wanted to dress nice. We knew that pictures were being taken and everything. But for me, like we brought our new dog and I was holding the dog. I was literally the only male over the age of eight, 17 yeah. that didn't stand up to get in the circle. And, but then the dog started acting up right as the prayer started. So I walked outside of the house. I didn't want him to be a distraction. And that wasn't like my way of getting out of the situation because I could have listened to the prayer and that was fine. But I also wasn't hurt that I didn't get to listen to it. Does that make sense? So it, it, it wasn't that bad. I mean, not even, I don't even want to say that it was, it was good. It was fine. It was, it was a good moment for them and it didn't hurt me whatsoever. But something that you said, uh, really, I, I've thought a lot about because you said that generally speaking in the past, you've been worried about ev- what everyone else is thinking about you not participating. But you didn't feel that way this time. Yeah, I think that there's, it's probably more of in the back of my mind type of thing. But I think over time, not only do you heal from that, you being me, <laughs> not only do I heal from that, uh, but you also learn to just let other people's opinions of you go. You've heard that that little cliche or that catchphrase someone's opinion of you is none of your business where it's like, but you're not a psychopath because you do care about what people, Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go around mistreating people because I don't care what they think, but it's, I can't, all I can do is be the best person that I can be. And I also think that that a lot of it stems from your family. They don't treat me poorly. Yeah. You know, they don't treat me poorly. I don't feel like it's a hostile environment. I don't feel like there's family members crying because I'm not standing up and doing that. It's, But, I mean, they have always treated you well, and so there is a shift in how you feel this time around versus other times. I think a big part of it was the breakdown that I had was, I mean, you heard it on the episode, like, I'm done. I'm I'm done caring. I can't care this much. It's too hard for me to be emotionally invested in so much of this. So I'm not going to be emotionally invested anymore. And I can support family and be emotionally invested in what they're, what's important to them. But like, I'm not going to sit in the room and be an emotional wreck when no one else is like, why would I do that? It just doesn't, doesn't okay, click so for me anymore. That, that actually makes a good point because how much of that is your personality versus your exit out of the church? And just that's a consequence of, of leaving the church. Uh, reframe the question. So you, you've decided I can't, I can't worry about what other people think of me anymore. I need to move on with my life. I feel like that's more your personality just because that's the, because you really, really care versus, you know, you just saying, well, this is just part of the process of me leaving the church because I think that like emotional health is tied to just how you deal with things as well. 
Right. I think it's probably both. I don't know if this is a weakness, but one of my personality traits is that I have a high need for affiliation, which means I want people around me to like me, to think I'm funny. I mean, this is, this is a pretty common trait for many people. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm unique in this way, but I really, I mean, and how that came out in the very beginning of our marriage is <laughs> I want to be the center of attention at all times. At all times. I want everyone to think I'm the life of the party. Last night when we were at the play, we saw probably five, six different people that we know. We just ran into them. And two of them said, as soon as I saw Jerry Lee Lewis, I just thought, oh, that is just like Alan Mount. Like two of them told me that. Like that's fun because I like to be the life of the party. <clears throat> so I definitely think that, that some of it is a personality thing. But it's also that's pushing against what I'm just saying now that I'm, I'm realizing like I can't worry about what people think. So that's actually, I think it's actually in contrast with some of my personality traits. But another personality trait, and can I just call to attention, I think it's so annoying when people self-assess themselves sometimes like this. So I'm sorry if this is coming off really annoying. But I'm also quite confident. I don't get embarrassed. I don't know that, I would you say I'm stubborn? I don't know that I'm stubborn. There's a, there is a piece of me that has grown since this whole faith transition thing that that has grown and lit a fire in me that says, you are who you are, you're good enough, and you don't have to apologize for who you are. And that part of me has grown. And I think that that need for affiliation is in constant conflict with that. But over time, it's, I think the, um, you can be who you're going to be has won out. I also think that time helps and time heals. And you've done a lot of healing over the past three years. And those around you have done healing as well. So maybe that judgment you may have felt that time has given you space to Mm -hmm. allow, make room for them and they make room for you and things can move on. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's the space that you and I are in right now is Mm -hmm. we've made space for everyone around us. And the ones that haven't made space, we haven't kept in our lives. Right. But for the most part, people have been pretty great with us. Mm -hmm. And so that healing time is now at a point where it just doesn't matter. Right. In your family, probably a year ago, no one had really talked to me about hardly anything. And now fast forward a year, I can think of three specific people that have in depth talked to me about a lot of things and not about, please tell me all the reasons why you don't believe, but it's how are you doing? How is this going? And they acknowledge the situation that we're in and they actually ask us questions about it. Uh, And that's been made it very easy for us to make, for me to make space for, for them as well, because I can tell like, I'm not a threat. I just had a conversation this past weekend with a member of your family and this member hadn't, hadn't really ever talked to me about anything. And they asked me a few questions. And at the end of the night, I went up to this individual and, and as I hugged the individual goodbye, I just kind of whispered and said, thank you for talking. Thank you for trusting me. It takes trust to open up and you don't know what I'm going to say back, especially the one of the first conversations you ever have with a person like me, this scary, scruffy bearded man who views have changed. Like, what is he going to say when, when I ask him questions? So I just said, thank you for trusting me. And I hope that I didn't, you know, break that trust. And we hugged and they said, we love you guys. And that was it. And like those things make these family milestones much less stressful and much easier to just support the family and love them. The other thing we wanted to let all of you know where we were is with our daughter Zara and her baptism. Mm -hmm. So we got the final word after meeting a number of times with our state presidency and the final word is that Alan cannot baptize Zara. And so you, if you remember right, the first time we told her, she cried and it was very sad. Well, the second time we just were in the kitchen standing around and Alan said to her, Hey, Zara, we wanted to let you know that they've told us that I can't baptize you. And she put her hands just across her body and folded them like, hmm. She gave this like scowl. Scowl. 
So she was like, like that. Kind of half half showing us she was upset, half jokey, I'm mad. And I looked at her and just reacted like, do you want to boo? Should we just boo? And so we pointed our thumbs at the ground, all three of us in the kitchen, boo. and just went, boo. And then we smiled and laughed. It was a, I thought it was a really good way to start the conversation because it lightened the mood a little bit. It allowed us to just kind of get it out like, no, this is bad. And, and then we chatted. What was the, the chat like for you, Katie, when we were sitting there? Yeah. I mean, we just sat there and we said, have you thought about who you would like to baptize you? And she said, no. Oh, then she said, you know, I'm just going to go up to the bishop and I'm going to say <laughs> to him, do you want me to go to heaven or do you not want me to go to heaven? <laughs> and she said it like with her finger in the air, all sassy. Do you want me to go to heaven? You can't see me, but I'm like moving my head all around and everything. Or do you not want me to go to heaven? And I laughed. It was pretty funny. It was really funny. And I think that it's funny that she doesn't know what the opposite of heaven is. Well, I'm she didn't she say said, like, right. or do you want me to go to hell? She right. just said, go to heaven or not go to heaven. Yeah. And I, and it was, it was cute. This was a, a good example of like a, a lighthearted telling her what I believe without being threatening to what Katie believes or what Zara even may believe. I said, you know, Zara, I, I don't know that you need to get baptized to, to go to heaven. And she says, oh, dad, every single time that baptism is mentioned at, at church, it's always you have to get baptized to go to heaven. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't always agree with all the lessons at church. And she like thinks about it and hears me say that. She's like, yeah, I don't either. But you know, dad, sometimes you like really bad movies. <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me? And she's like, yeah, sometimes you really like bad movies and I don't. Like Napoleon Dynamite. That's just a stupid movie. And you like it and I don't. And we disagree. And, like, that was her eight-year-old brain putting together, like, it's okay for us to disagree with each other. And I like how she thought, yeah, I, you don't always agree, but I don't always agree with you. Yes. Which is, like, ding, ding, ding. Oh, I swear, the other three kids are probably lost, but this girl's <laughs> figuring it out. It's awesome. It, I, it was such a, it was such, you know, it's not the greatest beginning of a conversation. It's not a conversation we wanted to have to have with her, but... She is smart and she's emotionally intelligent for an eight-year-old. She's really thinking about this. And in the end, she said, you know, we gave her all of the options. Anyone 16 and over <laughs> that she knows. We suggest her cousins, grandpa, neighbors, grandpa. Bishop, yep. Her friends, dads, everything. Right. And in the end of the conversation, she said, I don't want to be baptized if dad can't do it. And what was our response? Well, I, I, we told her, you know, right now you're, you're sad about the decision and we understand that. And so maybe just think about it and you might feel differently in a couple of weeks when right. we talk about it again. We yes. just want to give her space to let her feel sad about it and, and maybe sh she'll think about something else. So then today, her, one of her little besties got baptized and they did it, uh, they sent us a link via Zoom. So we watched her baptism via Zoom, the two of us. And I asked Zara, I said, have you given any more thought into who you want to baptize you? And she said, no. And I said, why not? And she said, because it makes me half sad. And I said, yeah, I can understand that, Zara. I said, well, you don't have to feel pressured. You can just you can just pick someone and we can do it when you feel comfortable doing it. And she said, okay. And then I said, I made sort of a joke about her friend being dunked and how we got to watch her. And we both kind of giggled about it. And that was it. I think Alan and I, what we're getting at when you are talking with a child about these big, important decisions. One of the things that has been really helpful is not to make it serious. We don't say, we need to talk. Please come into the living room. We're going to be shutting the door. No one can come and listen. I mean, that scares a child when right. you make it something really big. Keep it lighthearted. Keep it conversational. You know, you can do it organically it doesn't have to be forced and then also allow space allow space to let them feel bad allow space to let them um, choose how they want to feel or do what they want to do I was really proud that 
neither Alan nor I dogpiled on her when she said that she wanted to, she, she didn't want to be baptized if dad couldn't do it. Cause Alan could have said like, all right, that's it. You're not getting baptized. And I could have said, you know, I could have put my foot down and said, no, you are absolutely getting baptized and this I'm going to, happening. I'm going to pick it choice. and I'm going to pick the person since you can't make a decision. We're not going to do that to our kids because we know how difficult this is. And I mean, I, I think that, I mean, we watch, I think I told you social dilemma, but one of the problems of social media, especially those of us who have LDS friends and family still, which many of us do, is that you, you see that someone else getting baptized and the wording of these posts are, oh, you know, so and so decided to be baptized. We're so proud that they chose. We're so proud that they chose. And in my in the back of my mind, like I I'm really thinking about that, saying, you know, my kid is having a choice. I mean, the way that things are happening and the way we're talking about it and the way we're intentional about it, my kid has a choice. And I can't overemphasize enough how we are trying to support that choice. It's easy to just, I don't know, scoff at some of those posts that people make. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like rolling my eyes, right? But then I think to myself, no, I really, we are really trying hard to help her make the best decision, the wisest decision for her. And she has expressed that she wants to be baptized. So however we support that, we will. And if that means down the road, if that means next November, we will do, we'll take her lead on it. Yeah, we'll take her lead. That's the key, the key point here that whichever direction she goes, we will support her in it. And I think a word that we haven't used there is we both trust her. We trust that she will do what's best and we can help her as parents to identify different solutions or different options. But ultimately, like Katie, you have to be in a position where if she says, I don't want to be baptized right now, like, are you ready to support that? Yeah, I'm ready to support whatever she thinks and feels. I feel like we have done our job to try and talk to her and really feel out what we want to do and what she wants to do. And we've been intentional about it. I just, I have to be, I have to just catch myself and make sure that I'm not projecting my feelings about baptism onto her. Cause I think that's, that's a really easy thing for us to do. It's an easy for me to think to myself, well, Zara, don't you want this day? And it's so special. And there's just a lot that goes with that. And so I, I sometimes have to catch myself uh, and think like, no, this is not about me. This is about right. what her, what she wants. Yes, I still support her and her, her decision to be baptized. But if we can't work it out as far as who is baptizing her, I'm not going to force anything. I'm not going to force her to choose. We've allowed her to express herself. And because of that, it makes me super confident that whatever decision is made will be the right decision. Yeah. She, and she gets to be the one that defined that. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I should make a Facebook post that says, I'm so proud that my daughter chose not to be baptized. Would that go well? Mm-hmm. No, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. <laughs> we love her and whatever she does, we're, we're by her side. Before we end, I want to let everyone know that I am going to be in Arizona uh, the first weekend in November, and we decided to do a women's meetup. So if no you, boys allowed, no boys allowed. That's right. We actually have a address. We have someone who has asked or has generously offered to host the event. So it'll just be a ladies meetup. It's going to be Thursday, November fifth, and we'll probably start about six p.m. It'll be a potluck, or I don't know. Maybe everyone can just bring their own food because of covid happenings right. <laughs> but we have a venue we have a, a house we're gonna meet and i would love to see you there um i'm going to be spending the weekend with some girlfriends that i actually met through the podcast who have been like amazing supporters for the past couple years and so we're gonna head to sedona and check into a spa oh very nice yeah if you would like to see 
Uh, for all you Arizona folks, if you'd like to go to that meetup, there is an event in our Facebook group that you can go to to get more information and kind of sign up and, you know, whatever the direction of the food is, you can learn about it there. Uh, maybe on November 5th, that Thursday night, I can, uh, we can do a little Among Us with all the, all the boys. We could do a boys video game night or something from afar. That'd be fun. Right. That, that would be fun for you. Yeah, maybe well, maybe you may see two events in our Facebook group. One for the boys, one for the girls. Boys Pride, we're going to have more fun. It's more fun when girls get together. Yeah, I know. I just, I'm just i just pretending. <laughs> well, everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of Marriage in a Tightrope. We hope that you are all doing well. Please, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to marriageinatightrope at gmail.com. And you can follow us on Instagram, join our Facebook page. Shout out to so many of you who sent us text messages and emails and private chats, just giving some love to me and Alan. It was yeah. it was super, super nice and timely. And I think it helped get us through our little hump, right? Yes, it was extremely nice. After the episode yesterday, we had a tidal wave of support come our way. And a big one that I'll just shout out specifically is for our moderators of our Facebook group. Without asking a single question, they jumped into action to take over a lot of the responsibilities in the group without, I mean, above and beyond what I've ever done. But uh, that was so incredibly sweet. Lisa and Mary and the other Lisa and Rachel and Becca and Anthony and, I mean, I could, I'm missing people. We, Sterling. Sterling and just... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You shouldn't name people because you're going to forget someone. Miss someone out. I know. I know. But all of those moderators. Danae. uh, Danae. Oh, you guys, thank you so much. You, um, you just make it worth living. That sounded much more depressing than I meant it to be. You really just bring a smile to our faces and we're so lucky to have all of you in our lives. So please, uh, if you need any, any help with anything, Uh, reach out, join that Facebook group, join Instagram. There's a lot of people uh, in the same situation. You are not alone. We'll see you next time on Marriage and Tightrope.